Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about expanding quadratic expressions. And we've seen expanding before. The main question here is how do we go from vertex or factored form, the two forms we've just previously been learning about, into standard form? And here's our list. Vertex form, factored form, what do you notice is the same between them? Hopefully you're saying they both have brackets. And that's correct. We've got a lot of multiplication going on here. And we take a look at standard form and all of the terms are separated. They're separated by a plus sign. That means that there's been expansion going on to get to standard form. So if you're taking this down as a note, you might want to just write something like this, that these two forms, in order to get to standard form, you have to expand and simplify. And we've done that before. Let's do a little bit of a recall on it. So let's multiply this monomial, which means one single item, into that binomial. Well, what do you mean by into? I don't really understand that. Well, this says 3x times whatever's in this bracket. You could almost pretend like you have no idea what's inside this bracket kind of like a pencil case that's closed, you don't know what's in there, but you need to multiply everything that's in there by three, and in this case by three x. So you open up that pencil case, and no matter what's in there, you need to multiply them by three. Kind of like if you were selling these pencil cases, uh, you needed to stock up on what was going in them, and you need three of everything. I've used that example before in class too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply three x times four x, and that's something you should you know, be able to do in your head. 3 times 4 is 12. x times x is x squared. Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 3x times the negative 7. And again, something you should be able to do in your head. 3 times 7, 21. Positive and negative is negative. And x kind of comes along for the ride. It's like saying x times 1. And that's our final binomial that we have here. This would be our standard form with nothing on the end, so our c would be zero. Now just to go one step further, if you kind of forget how to multiply two binomials, it's very, very similar. We're gonna take everything in the first bracket and step by step multiply it times everything in that second bracket. Extremely similar to what we just did. So let's start with the three x here, and we're gonna multiply three x times x, and when you multiply three x times x, it's just three x squared, and then, 3x times negative 2. Well, that should also be very simple to do. That's negative 6x. So that's exactly the same procedure we just did above, but now we're going to do it again. So now we're going to say, okay, well, I've got this negative 5 times x, and negative 5 times x is just negative 5x, and then negative 5 times negative 2, and negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. And there's one last step here. The final step is to simplify. So that's the expansion part. And you always want to simplify when you're done. And so we're going to simplify this. We're going to collect our like terms. We're going to say there are no other x squared. So this is 3x squared. And then we've got 6x and 5x. And they're both negative. So we're just collecting these negative 11x. And then the plus 10 on the end. And there's our standard form a x squared plus bx plus c. You still don't know what all of those letters do, you know what the a does, so if I were to ask you whether this parabola opens up or down, you'd say up. You'd also be able to tell me that it's been stretched by a factor of three. Now, while I have this here, let's talk about the y-intercept. We've talked about the y-intercept in previous lessons. The x value at a y-intercept is zero, so if I plug in zero into these x values, what am I left with? I'm left with 10. And so that means that 10 is my y-intercept. Okay, so that's all just a recall, but let's move on to new things. So we've got this rectangle, and we want to calculate the total area of the rectangle. Now let's pretend that there were no cross beams in the center of this rectangle, it's just the pure rectangle here. And I told you that the area of any rectangle in the world has not changed, it's still length times width with our width of x plus two and our length of x plus three. Well, what kind of rectangles have these crazy lengths and widths? What if you're doing a scale model? So 
For instance, you've got a drawing of a rectangle that you need for a tent or some clothing you're making, and the real deal is going to be bigger. So in this case, it can be any number goes into x, and for the width, you're going to add 2, and then any number also can go into the length, and you're going to add 3 to that. So the length will always be 1 larger than the width. You know, that's just a, a very simple example. All right, well, you know, there's a reason why I put this grid here. You can divvy this rectangle up into four sections. You're going to have a section for x times x, a section for x times 2, a section for x times 3, and a section for 2 times 3. It looks confusing, but if we just go back one slide, it's no different than what I did in the recall, where I multiplied everything in the left bracket by everything in the right bracket. So let's do that. x times x, we should all know what that is. It's x squared. x times 2 is 2x. x times 3, 3x. And 2 times 3 is 6. And so the total area of this rectangle, which started off as x plus 2 times x plus 3, after we expand that all out, and I just need to write these down now, is x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. But do I have to write the plus 2x and the plus 3x separately? Not really, because they're like terms. So 2 and 3 is 5. So let's take a look at the way I did it with the drawing in this rectangle, where you, you know, just multiply the terms versus the, the method where you multiply everything. Well, it's no different. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. Nothing there has changed. You don't need to draw a rectangle every time. I'm just trying to show you visually how it works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do this with three different expressions, three different quadratic expressions. So we're not going to be asked to convert this into standard form. So what form is this currently in? you should have said factored form. So this is no different than what I've just done in the past two examples. This is currently factored form. The a is 1, so we don't need to do anything with it afterwards. And we're getting really good at doing this now that you've seen a couple examples. So x times x, x squared. x times 5 is 5x, negative 3x, and negative 15. Last but not least, collect your like terms. A lot of people like to do that in their head. I find most people will make a mistake when they try to do that in their head. You should always write down the intermediate steps. Okay, so here's our here's our standard form. You know, this is all still y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a is 1. It opens up and has not been stretched. Let's take a look at the second example. What format is the second example in? You should have said vertex form. What's our a value? Our a value is still 1. Our k value is 0. It's non-existent. And we've got this interesting stuff on the inside that we've not really seen in vertex form before, but it is in vertex form. So how do we expand this out? Well, the key is the squared. We all know what squared is. Squared means it is the item times itself. So I've got 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3, which is no different than when it was in factored form. Now there is a shortcut for this, I'll explain it in a minute, but let's do the work. So 4x squared, 2x times 2x, 4x squared, 2x times 3, 6x, 3 times 2x is also 6x, and 3 times 3 is 9. So what we end up with is 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. So what's the shortcut? Can you, can you figure it out? Can you, can you point out what the shortcut is here? Now, you don't, I don't want you to memorize shortcuts. You, you obviously need to understand the math being done here. But the idea here is to square the first term. So what's 2x squared? 2x squared is 4x squared. Multiply the two terms and double it. 2x 
times 3 is 6x and double it because there's going to be there twice. So, you know, it's pretty easy to do. 2x times 3 is 6x, double that, 12x. And then square the last term. So let's do that quick, quicker now. Square the first term, multiply them and double, square the last term. And that'll work every single time you're squaring a binomial. Now, again, it's better that you understand the math being done. And our last example, what form is this in? Well, it's also in vertex form. Now we have an a value that's not 1, and we have a k value on the end. So this is going to be slightly different than the work we did prior. We do know that the squared takes priority because of bed mass. The plus 8 is going to stick around for the ride, and the negative 2 has to wait. So bed mass, brackets, well, there's nothing to do inside the brackets. Exponents, OK, I'm going to take care of that. So let's, let's multiply this out. 4x and 4x, 16x squared, 4x and negative 7, negative 28x. Negative 7 and 4x is, again, negative 28x. And negative 7 times negative 7 is positive. 49. Now don't make the mistake that a lot of people make. They forget to put the k value back on. Remember to put that there. That plus 8 has to stick around. Now we've done the brackets, the exponents. There's no division. And there's multiplication to continue to do. We've got to multiply the negative 2 into the bracket. But let's take care of this negative 28 first. And we're going to say, well, you know, that's not negative 28x and negative 28x. That's negative 56 x. And you really shouldn't write it like that. What you should do is you should write it back out again. Or you could have done the shortcut. So that it was done for you already. Okay, so negative 2 into that bracket. Negative 2 times 16, negative 32. Negative 2 times negative 56 is positive 112. And negative 2 times 49 is negative 98. And we still have the plus 8 on the end. The k value is kicking around. He's still here. So by the time we're done, we'll collect our like terms. And we'll add the 8 to the negative 98 and get negative 90. And we're done. And our a value and our b value and our c value are very visible. So I can ask you, you know, does it open up or down? A value is negative, it opens down. Is it a stretch or a compression? It's a large stretch of 32. So this parabola is going to be 32 times taller than the normal parabola. And what's the y-intercept? Again, the x value is 0 for the y-intercept. If I plug 0 into these guys, they disappear. So my y-intercept is negative 90. And that's it for expansion. That's as hard as it gets, really. So let's put this into context. Why are we learning this? Well, what if I gave you a parabola and I said, determine the equation of the parabola and express your answer in standard form? For some reason, somebody has asked you to express this in standard form. One of the main reasons being that it's called standard for a reason. It is the normal form. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the work we did in the previous lessons where you decide what form to put this in. I don't have the vertex, and in, in this particular case, the vertex would be hard to find. But I do have the zeros. And of the three forms, the form that gives me zeros is factored form. So I'm going to start with factored form. And the problem that's been recurring is that we don't know what a is. Now luckily, they gave us the y-intercept. They gave us another point to plug in. So we're going to just you know, plug in everything we have. We've got our s, we've got our t, and we've got an x and y for the other point on the parabola. So the y value will be 4. The a is what I don't know. The x is 0, because that's the x value of the point I'm using. One of the zeros is negative 2. So we actually put it in like this. Because remember, a negative and negative makes positive. One, the other 0 is a 3. So we've got x minus 3. 
And let's do the math on this. So 4 equals 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And we'll divide both sides by negative 6, get negative 4 over 6, which does reduce. That's negative 2 thirds. And that's my a value. But they didn't ask for just factored form. I mean, it's, it's lovely that I found a and I have the factored form. But they wanted it in standard form. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my factored form that I found and I'm going to expand it out. It sounds more daunting than it is. The negative two-thirds looks like it's going to be troublesome, but it's, it's really not. So x and x is x squared. I've got a negative 3x. I've got a positive 2x. And I've got a negative 6. And if, you, if you're one of those people that needs to draw the arrows as you're doing this, by all means do that x times x, x squared. x times negative 3, negative 3x. 2x, negative 6. Go right ahead. Write those in. I've been doing it for years. Okay, so we can simplify our lives here and say that this is negative 2 thirds x squared minus 1x minus 6. How did I get that? Well, it's pretty simple. I collected my like terms. Negative 3x and 2 is negative 1. And last but not least, multiply the a value in, which, you know, you have fractions, use a calculator. It's not rocket science. So negative 2 thirds, x squared, negative and negative is positive, so it's positive 2 thirds, x, negative and negative is positive again, 2 times 6 is 12, divided by 3 is 4. And that's as far as we can go. Don't bother trying to get rid of the denominators. This is not something that we can simplify because this is just y equals. And that's our standard form. That's our answer for this particular parabola here. And that's it. We're going to practice these kind of skills in class, expanding and going from a graph to the expression, expanding a vertex form, expanding a factored form. So a nice uh, short lesson this time around. If you need to see more examples, I'll post them in the uh, links in our Blackboard. If you are not on my Blackboard course, feel free to look this up on YouTube. There are plenty of other videos on expanding, uh, going from vertex to standard form, or factored to standard form.